Hi there and welcome back. Today I'm going to be changing up a little bit and shelving the Tau project for now and getting started with a brand new army, which I picked up recently, which is the Eldari Combat Patrol. And I also picked up some Wraith Blades and a Wraith Knight as well. And I really wanted to do something different with this army. So I thought, let's give Craft World my Mera a try. And the first unit I'm going to be painting up in this brand new battle force is going to be the iconic Wraith Blades. And similar to my Tau army, I'm going to be building up a coloured Zenithal highlight from a black base coat, but this time we're going to be making it a turquoise Zenithal. And we're going to be giving the new Army Painter Fanatics range a test drive and see how they perform out of an airbrush. And as I said, we're going to be using the turquoise triad and working our way up over three stages, starting off dark with deep azure. And for this first armour highlight, we're going to be airbrushing this on to about 90% of the model, just leaving the very deepest recesses in the black primer. Generally, I'll come in with the airbrush from the top of the model and also at 45 degrees and a little bit as well at 90 degrees as well to get into some of the harder to reach places. But as long as you aim to hit the majority of the model, you should be good. And you don't need to worry about any overspray at this stage as any overspray that does happen will be corrected later on. The next highlight colour is going to be Turquoise Siren. And we're just following the same routine here but this time we want to be slightly more controlled with each one of our sprays. With the idea here being that we, we want to highlight each section of the armour while still leaving some of the previous turquoise colour left behind. And I'm also going to be trying to only come in with the airbrush from the top of the model and at 45 degrees this time. And I find using the kind of rocking the airbrush trigger back and forward slowly the best method for this. As it really helps to control the amount of paint that's coming out of the airbrush at any given time. And for the final armour highlight, we're going to be using Marine Mist, which is the lightest colour in the triad. And in this step, we want to be even more careful with our airbrush sprays than we were in any of the previous two steps. And this really should only be applied to the very top highlight areas on the model. You don't need to spray this absolutely everywhere. And definitely less is more when it comes to this final highlight. And again, just employ the rocking your finger back and forward on the airbrush trigger so that you can really minimize the amount of paint that's flowing through on each spray. And for this final highlight, you really only want to be coming in from the top of the model with the airbrush. Now that we've finished highlighting up the armour, it's time to move on to highlighting up the sword. And we're going to be switching up the colour triad to the magenta triad. And we're going to be starting off with diabolic plum. And then working our way up two brighter highlights as we progress. 
And in this pass, we just want to cover the entire surface area of both of the swords with this color. And if you are worried about overspray onto the armor parts, you could just brush this on, or you could do what I did with some of the models, which was just to use a piece of paper or cardboard to place in between the sword and the armor itself, so you don't get any overspray onto the armor. Either way should be good, whichever you choose. The next highlight color we're going to be using is Warlock Magenta. And we just want to apply this to 50% of the sword, starting from roughly the middle of the sword and taking it up all the way to the tip. And being careful as we did before, not to get any overspray onto any of the armor parts. And the final highlight we're going to be applying to the swords is going to be of Enchanted Pink. And this time we only want to apply the highlight to the final 25% of the sword. Next up, we're going to be using any white of your choice and in my case, I went for Vallejo Off-White. And I'm going to start to begin to block in any of the areas on the model that I want to be white. And more specifically, that's going to be the loincloth and also the large wraithbone back spike on the model as well. And to get a nice smooth coat that's going to cover the black underneath this, I did water this down a little bit, which did mean I had to apply two or three coats. I believe it was three coats in the end. But just do as many coats as necessary to get a nice smooth opaque white in these areas. Next up, I'm going to be using the Army Painter Fanatics Greedy Gold. And I'm going to be using this to paint in the handle and the hilt for the sword. And also the small raised emblem that's on the chest of the model as well. This was my first time using this gold and I did really like it. It's a really nice kind of coppery gold colour and it has a really nice coverage. I found that it covered pretty much on one coat for the most part. Next up, I'm going to be using Vallejo Black to paint in any of the gems on the model that I want. And there are quite a few potential gems on the model. So it's really up to you which ones you want to paint in. But for my models, I decided to go for the three gems on each of the shoulder pads. The gems on both of the swords. And I also went for a couple of the larger gems as well that were on the large wraithbone. Uh, back spike. Now there are plenty of great guides online on how to paint gemstones and I just went for a simple three-step highlight and I just used similar colors to what I used to highlight the sword starting with Diabolic Plum 
moving into Enchanted Pink, and then finally Diviner Light. With the idea here being that we start with the Diabolic Plum, and we're going to paint this on about 75% of the black, just leaving 25% of the black left showing at the top of the gem. We're then going to apply the next highlight of Enchanted Pink. And this time we're just going to apply it to about 50% of the gemstone, making sure we leave behind some of the Diabolic Plum and also the black as well. And then we're going to apply the final highlight of Diviner Light. And this time we're just applying it to the final 25% of the gem. Again, making sure that we leave all of the previous colours left showing as well. And the final step for the gems is to take a deep breath and apply a small dot highlight to the very top point of the gem in the black area. Just try your best not to make a blob here, but if you do, don't worry about it. I did as well. You can either touch it up or just repaint the entire gem as the process is quite simple anyway. And for the gems that are on the swords, I use the exact same technique here. The only difference being that I used the same three colours that I used to highlight up the armour. Next up we're going to be tackling the helmet and to do that we're going to be building up the highlights using an airbrush and spraying on some blue paint. Firstly we're going to start off with royal blue and we're going to spray this on to the centre of the helmet and also the very top tip of the helmet as well. And when doing the central part of the helmet, I found it easier to spray in from either side of the helmet rather than come in face on. Due to the shape of the helmet, the paint just applies better if you do it this way. Next we're going to apply another highlight layer and this time we're going to be using Arctic Gem and again we're just using the Army Painter Triad system here and picking a colour further down the triad and similarly to the previous steps we just want to apply this over the previous blue layer ensuring that we leave some of the previous blue layer visibly left behind. And in the final highlight layer, I'm going to be using Bright Sapphire, which is the brightest colour in the triad. And we're just going to be using this to apply a very small spot highlight to the previous layer. And again, just be careful not to overdo this one as you still want to leave all of the previous highlights still visible. And now that we've applied all of the highlights and blocked out any of the coloured areas, the model's really starting to come together. The only issue is it has that kind of obvious airbrush look to it. So we're going to be using the Mr. Weathering Multi Black Pigment to bring the tone down add some shade to all the recesses and take away that freshly airbrushed look. In my previous Tau videos I used this straight out of the bottle which was great for my Tau army as I really wanted the pigment to darken the entire model and only really leave the highest highlights kind of visible through the weathering pigment. 
And if I applied the weathering pigment straight out of the bottle on this model, it would do a very similar thing, i.e. it would turn the model pretty much entirely black and it would kind of take away all the nice colours that have built up using the airbrush. So this time I decided to thin the pigment with one part pigment to one and a half parts solvent. This way the weathering pigment is much thinner than in my previous video and only slightly darkens the model while still shading in all of the recesses. And I just applied this to the entire model, excluding the blades of the swords. Next up is to wick away all of the excess pigment on the model. And to do this, just clean off your brush and then just use the Mr. Weathering solvent by dipping your brush into a small amount of it and then just applying it to all of the highlight areas on the model. And once your brush has wicked up the excess pigment, you can just wipe it off on a paper towel. And just keep going around the model repeating this process until you've wicked off all of the excess pigment. And just keep checking the model for any pooling that may be occurring as the pigment will tend to gather in certain areas around the model, so you just need to make sure you wick that up before the pigment dries. And if you do want a more in-depth guide on how to use the Mr. Weathering pigments, then you can check out one of my previous videos on how I painted my Tau army. And once that's dried, you should be left with a really nicely highlighted and shaded model with some really nice vivid colours without having to spend days glazing the model. And to be honest, you could just leave the model the way it is. But if you want to go that extra step further and give the model that little bit more of a pop, then you can go in with some edge highlighting. And in my case, I decided just to edge highlight all of the swords using Diviner Light. But it's really up to you how little or how much you want to edge highlight on the model. But after that, the model is done and it's ready to be based. I had no idea how these were going to turn out when I started painting these. I had a picture in my head and just started to spray onto the model. And in the end, I think it turned out pretty good. They really remind me of my old Warhammer Fantasy Dark Elf army colour scheme that I used to have. And it's definitely something a little bit different, so I think I'm going to try and apply this to the rest of my Eldari army. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And as always, if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, including more of this Eldari Craftworld Mimera colour scheme and a bunch of other projects which are slowly starting to build up. But hopefully I'll find the time to get through it soon enough. And if you do have any requests or suggestions on what I should paint next, then just leave a comment down below. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.